Hello everybody, it's Bilboman back again with some more Shadows of Forbidden Gods. Today I'm going to be playing Openum, and I'm going to be doing a similar challenge to the last video, though slightly different. But I'm just going to go ahead and get in here and explain as I go. So I'm going to be playing on harder difficulty, just like the last video. I'm going to roll a random world and turn on Shuffle Random Seed. But aside from that, just going to keep the default settings. So. Ophanim is often regarded as one of the hardest gods in the game, if not the hardest, and I think that perception is partially accurate, but partially just due to how hard it is for the game to explain correctly how you're supposed to play him. And I'll give an example of what I mean. The game, for example, suggests that you have like a kingdom of shadow and a kingdom of faith, as if you're supposed to keep these equally balanced. But in my experience, that's not really true for a couple of reasons. Firstly, when playing normally, it's entirely viable to focus on shadow and just win that way. But um, more relevantly for this run that I'm going to be doing, and if you're trying to do a thematic faith-focused run, uh, theocracies don't actually need that much shadow to exist in the world. They need a little, but they're more using it as like a starting fuel more than as an equal counterpart, if that makes sense. Because faith rapidly consumes shadow and is boosted by nearby shadow, but you don't need like a whole equal area. In fact, what you really want is little sprinklings of shadow within areas with faith. Now. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be trying to win a run of Ophanum with just the starting supplicant, which is not quite agentless, but it's as close as you can get with Ophanum. And I'm going to be doing that using a couple of different tactics. The first thing that we really care about is where the covens are placed. So we got one coven down there and two up here. And then we need to decide what nation we're going to try to turn into a theocracy. This map has a couple of pretty big nations, one really big nation here in the center. And that might be a sensible target, but let me check here. So with this, it'll hit these two first, and then start down here, similarly with these two. Now let's see, yeah, I took duality. So uh, you, the chosen one, watch you. You're native to the city of Karam. Okay, that's fine for our purposes. Now, we could just try to make our theocracy this nation, though in that case there's just not really enough open space for us to win easily. Well, in either case, I think we're going to go down to this coven first to start out, and I'll explain why in a moment. Basically, covens are even in like normal play, they're really, really good. They give you a lot of strong ways to spread Shadow, especially in the early game. But their main weakness, of course, is that if you use the Shadow Spread option, Dark Worship, too often, it stacks a bunch of menace. And then nearby nations will be like, oh, that's too much menace, and send an army to burn down the coven. But obviously, you can usually get in two to three uses of Dark Worship before that happens, and often more if you successfully in Shadow nearby capitals. But in our case, we're playing Ophidim, so we actually can abuse one of Ophidim's powers in order to get more than that. So Ophidim's first starting power is Sleepless Labor, which costs 2 HP on an agent in order to get 20 progress on a challenge. And we can use that for Dark Worship in order to essentially get Dark Worship completed in two turns. So we can actually an example here. We always level lore as the first level up because we want to do things like this. Well, and Shadow has the same difficulty as Dark Worship, but War in the World, City of Karam, that's not surprising. But it's a useful starting step, so we're just going to go ahead and lay low now to avoid stacking up too much menace. We're going to defeat Ogre down there. Cool. So when we get one more power in twenty in uh, eight turns, we'll be able to start using it to spam Dark Worship. But for now, I'm just going to do it the regular way. We can get one free use, and then the second use will get us into the territory where 
other nations will take notice. Like if we look right here, their motivation is minus 17 at the moment, because it's minus 35 base, plus 20 from the target menace. And if we go to 40, then that's at the point where it might show up as the top motivation and we might lose this coven. And also other nearby nations are also thinking about erasing it, though their distance reduces their um, motivation. So we can probably pull off one more Dark Worship if we really wanted to, as this guy's going to win Shadow pretty rapidly. But I think we're just going to chill for now and go ahead and wrestle for control of the Primal Fonts, since in the early game, that's a really good way to get lots of XP, and it happens to be near where we started. So you're aware. So this is a couple of small nations. We don't really care about that. Stars shine less brightly as our shadow starts. Right. We're going to have to wrestle for control a bit more, but for now, we're just going to get another level of intrigue. Play low. And do this again. Okay, that's another small time kingdom. We don't really care about that. Words established. We're just going to tell the game we don't care about that. You're a redeem. Don't care about that either. Alright, you're aware. No surprises. This is better than most. We're not probably. We're probably not going to use the first daughter. It's just not super necessary for this, though obviously the first daughter is really good, and even if you have only one agent, you may as well have that agent summoning the first daughter, because you can just wipe a giant chunk of the map, and that's a ton of points. But it's not really thematic for the thing we're doing. So now we're just going to go ahead and lay low again. And then now we're going to drink Primal Waters, because that gives us a little boost in terms of our ability to do stuff. We're going to pump out a couple of Dark Worships. Here we actually can complete it in one turn, which is fun. And your motivation is still negative. Your motivation is still negative, so we're just going to chill and lay low again. And then now let's go ahead and do Dark Worship the slow way while we wait for our power to build up again. And now we lay low again. So the idea here is as we spam Dark Worship more and more, we're going to be building up the total world shadow. And our goal is to get that to 12%. Well, 12% world panic. Uh, I think it's the panic it produces a bit more than the actual world shadow, but that's not really relevant to us. And once it reaches that point, any settlements that have faith, which is none at the moment, but we're going to go about fixing that, will get a permanent plus one faith gain, though that gain is overridden by stuff like fear of nearby shadow or fear of our own shadow, which is obviously the much larger buffs that you get for having directly adjacent or shadow right on top of the settlement with faith. And that's useful because faith tends to eat up shadow pretty quickly, and once it starts spreading, it's just impossible to maintain areas with shadow near a burgeoning spread of faith, and we'll need that global bonus in order to successfully spread uh, faith in any reasonable time frame. Here, I'm sort of split between the idea of attempting to uh, make a theocracy out of this really, really big nation, which would be a project that would basically take the whole game, but would win outright, I think, given how large this nation is or is trying to instead uh, spread our faith in this smaller coastal nation, which wouldn't be big enough to win the game, but if it went ahead and annexed some smaller nations adjacent to it, could push up the number of points to the point where we'd be able to win off of that. I am going to have to decide at some point, but we do have a head start on Shadow here, though it is likely, with this ruler quickly approaching 100% enshadowment, that the chosen one is going to go ahead and attempt to redeem that ruler at some point. Yeah. Yeah, so he already wants to redeem this ruler, though it's not his top motivation. But it's his second motivation, and as soon as he's done completing this training, odds are he's going to hop right over here and try to redeem. But that's fine, because even if he redeems this ruler, this is still going to be a nice big blob of shadow that will be spreading on its own without further interference from us after we get finished using Dark Worship here. Let's see. You don't want to burn that down yet. And you don't want to burn that down because it's too far away. So I think after this 
like last one, we're just going to go ahead and start using power instead. Okay, so that's a couple more casts. And if we look at uh, location-based shadow, that's a lot of very thick shadow nearby. Which is very helpful for us. And now we're just going to go ahead and lay low. Inevitably, they're going to burn down this coven, but that's fine. Yep, there's the raise order. We're just going to take advantage of it to quickly get our menace down while this location still exists, because we're going to have trouble laying low later on, as we start only being able to lay low in uninshadowed cities or cities with lots of faith, and faith doesn't actually boost the uh, menace reduction of lay low. Alright. Go ahead and wrestle for control of the font again. So why not? And drink one more time. Let's see, uh, just gonna take another entry. Alright, so now we're gonna go ahead and probably just start planting our faith immediately, and then maybe using this coven later to make another blob of shadow. Yeah, so this is not ideal, but it's a decent chunk of shadow. And with the Chosen One behaving the way they do, it's not really super possible to control perfectly whether or not the map will just sort of screw you and force a situation where you'll be piling all of that shadow pointlessly on a ruler who's going to inevitably get redeemed because they're the Sovereign. Let's see, I think let's start shadow there. Let's use Swift of Foot a couple more times. So the point of taking duality here, and there's a couple of lines that you can take with this challenge. You can try taking Inquisitor as a way of enabling you to get rid of doubt when it's in the early stages without actually having to take the menace cost of abusing sectarian violence. But in this case, I like duality because a lot of the time your issues are more in spreading faith quickly enough in order to get things done than they are about... Uh, simply trying to deal with doubt, because doubt is a late-game concern that mostly just slows you down or, like, hurts you right at the cri critical tipping point of declaring a theocracy, and if you set up faith quickly enough, odds are you can kind of ride out a little bit of doubt and not worry about it. Alright, so that's a bit of shadow, and we want to put shadow on places that are not holy sites, obviously. So now we've switched to faith, so we'll go ahead and start our first faith in this location. Okay. And I think we also want faith here, so I'm gonna go ahead and maybe drop some shadow over here, actually. So... At this point, we're mostly using Swift of Foot, because now that we're at Intrigue 8, because of Primal Waters, and even without Primal Waters, we'd be at 6. So it'd be sort of marginal to actually use uh, to actually use Sleepless Labor, because it would only save us, like, one turn or so, and it, we'd have to rest and resupply. It's not really worth it. Whereas Swift of Foot always saves us one turn of movement, so we just want to use that whenever we're moving our guy around. So he's going to try and build the alliance here. Are you aware you are? That's sort of a shame. All right, Shadow Dream back. All right, so we've established a bit more Shadow here. And I think we'll go down here. And... Oh, huh, why is that so high security? 
Oh, because uh, this doesn't count as full infiltration. That's uh, unfortunate. So we'll just go ahead anyway. And we'll be unlocking a bunch of powers that we can't use, because that's just how Ophanum is. There's not really any point to using his theocracy powers until, well, you have a theocracy. And you don't want to declare a theocracy until you can get a good chunk of a nation in it. So we're just going to be ignoring Crusade, Excised Out, Peace and Order. All of this stuff doesn't really do anything for us in the early game. So we've got Faith started here and here. And... Let's see. Hmm. Uh, we could get Shadow started there, but for now I think we go ahead and lay low in this coven real quick. This is swift afoot a couple of times. Now lay low. Alright, faith is spreading. Okay, that's fine. As long as it doesn't spread here too quickly, we're in decent shape. We want it we want the faith to spread to cities as quickly as possible, because for most purposes, cities are the only places that matter, because they're the ones that decide whether or not a given area stays with the theocracy when we declare it, or whether it joins the rest of the nation in trying to fight back when we inevitably start a civil war. And just as I say that, it spread here, didn't it? Yep. Well, that's a tad unfortunate. We're not quite at the level of world shadow we need to be. But hopefully here, now that we've infiltrated this, we can lay low real quick, and yeah, that's a bunch of spreading. Zero redeemed again. Ooh, a war. Uh, okay, that's a small time war that doesn't really matter. Don't care about Orcish upstarts. Who are you redeeming? This ruler? Uh, that was kind of inevitable, but it hurts our total world shadow, so that's a shame. Yeah, and I think at this point we just go ahead and in shadow. And we can lay low a bit longer. I'm aware that Sovereign's regimed. And once we're at minimum, we'll go ahead and Dark Worship a few times. And that gets us almost to the level we need. We need 12%. Okay. There we go. Now we're just going to lay low. And the other benefit of that is that if we get a little bit of shadow scattering around this area, faith will spread much more quickly in heavily in shadowed cities. So we've got faith coming up to decent levels here. World shadow's still not quite where we need it to be, but as the shadow spreads a bit more, we might get to where we need to. Okay, they're going to burn down this coven. That's more or less what we expected. Doubt has arisen here, but the thing is, this is an example of why we might not necessarily care about doubt. Uh, this is a minor settlement. It doesn't matter how much doubt this gets. It doesn't matter in helping or hurting us getting to a theocracy. The only thing that matters is that we really don't want this uh, doubt to spill over to a city that we need to 
uh, hit 100 or more. But as you can see, this place is already at like 130. By the time that this doubt reaches 100% and starts to spill over, that's going to be like almost 50 turns from now. So if you imagine 50 turns of this uh, place going up at plus 3, because this place is always going to be in shadow and providing that plus 2 bonus, in that amount of time, we'll basically have perfected this place. So even if Doubt spills over to here, sure, it might even start removing Faith, and it doesn't do that until it reaches a fairly sizable chunk of Doubt, but this place is already in the bag for us, so we don't care about Doubt arising here. Like, yeah, it might spread to this city, but this city doesn't even have our Faith yet. We can just write the city off and conquer it, basically. So, yeah, here we have a very good basis of Faith going here, here, and here, and that's a good start. If we count, though, there's a lot more cities that don't have our faith. So our goal here is to get it so that more than half of the cities in this nation are on our side. You can kind of finagle it a little bit, like a city with a really big army, like a 110 is obviously a bigger deal than like a place with 40, but you just need more army mass on your side than on the enemies, essentially. All right, so you're going to go ahead and go down here. And you're just going to lay low here because this place has enough shadow that doing that is still efficient. Okay, so that's funny. Uh, you're not even aware. Uh, so we could declare this as like a little mini theocracy that might even be helpful for us. Because the world panic is always going to go up really, really high, regardless of what we do, because that's just how Ophanim is. So we have a little bit of cushion, because when we declare a theocracy, it creates 20% temporary world panic. So we could declare a theocracy right now, and it wouldn't even change anything. The only thing we have to be wary of is declaring too many theocracies later on in the game, where we can stack up so much panic that it starts to get to the point where the chosen one can actually like go to our tomb and kill us and we can't do anything about that because we only have the one agent so we really want to avoid that happening but outside of that we can declare a couple of theocracies if we need to so this might be nice if it reaches high enough levels of faith but if not it's also fine all right so your next thing is Shadow, so I think we'll go ahead and go here. Infiltrate that farming community. Let's see, where did you... Oh, place that doesn't matter because it's just going to build up Shadow again. Very nice that this place is still decently Shadowed, even though it was redeemed earlier. Actually, hold on, this Chosen One seems to be doing a lousy job of actually spreading awareness. Huh. Don't actually know why that is. But, uh, that's very helpful, because when the Chosen One spreads tons and tons of awareness, it's quite annoying. Awareness basically kills natural faith growth. Unless you're doing something absolutely absurd, you're not going to have faith growing at any reasonable rate in an aware settlement. Now, you can obviously go ahead and assassinate the ruler if you really want to, but that's a lot of work, and in our case, we just don't really have the practical means to do that in, like, a city or a capital, because one agent just is not going to be able to reasonably get to the point of uh, being able to conduct any assassination that's not a brutal assassination, and we don't have the might to do a brutal assassination, so it's just a huge sink of time and resources. So Doubt's still piling up there, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, hopefully this place will get our faith shortly. And with that in mind... Uh, I should put, I should go ahead and put Shadow here, so I'll just infiltrate here. Uh-huh. Doubt has arisen here. Again, that doesn't super matter. Like, it, it's probably going to stop us from hitting enough faith here to declare a theocracy, but that's okay, we didn't need this place anyway. Let's see, let's just double check how awareness is spread. 
Okay, so yes, there is awareness down here. That's okay. Uh, oh, there is awareness up here. And that's annoying. Let's see. Oh, you are actually fairly likely to form the alliance, and that would be really bad for us. Uh, huh. That's, yeah, that's pretty tough. But if that does happen, we just sort of have to bite the bullet and declare theocracy immediately before awareness starts spreading enough to kill our faith. And that's the risk, of course, with uh, approaching this the way that I have been. There's just a chance that uh, the alliance forms in that really big nation, but in this map setup, it's just very hard to do anything that's not trying to take over this big nation if we want to win with just the one agent. So doubt's arisen here, and that's adjacent to two places, but this doubt is going to be pretty late to the party, hopefully. Well, ugh, this place hasn't gained faith yet, so that's that sort of sucks, actually. Okay, so now this place has... We could actually try to get rid of this doubt. That wouldn't be a terrible idea. But it's also not super... Eh, it's, not a, it's also not a super big deal, I don't think. Hmm. Yeah, why not? I'll try for it. Okay, that spreads awareness to these settlements, I think, yes. Um, but that doesn't matter. Actually, that might even lead to this faith just fizzling out before this doubt gets to spread, which would be ideal. Oh. Oh, okay. Huh, well that's... that makes me look a little silly. Can't uh, reduce doubt if uh, doubt is higher than faith. So I think we'll just go up here and uh, lay low for a bit. Okay, we're redeemed again. Doesn't super matter. Who are you redeeming? This guy again. Odds are this time he's going to make him aware, but it doesn't matter. That's why we decided not to try to spread our faith there, and are instead doing it over here to admittedly mixed success. Just gonna quickly infiltrate here because we need to get to faith. Hold on, what are you doing? You are warning the world in that location. That's a big surprise. That's more or less what I expected he would be doing. And now we go ahead and spread our faith here. I think actually yeah, I will start faith here because that will mean that this will hit 100% quicker and spread to here more quickly, I hope. This area doesn't need our help. This area, this will almost certainly hit 100. Yes, so doubt actually completely fizzled out here because of the awareness, which is a nice little bonus, actually. It did manage to spread here, though, so this place is not going to be useful to us, sadly. So, yeah, okay, 
do have a base started there. And now you can just lay low again. Yeah, I've actually managed to get a few place per places for per... Bleh. We have managed to get a place perfected, though if... Uh, oh, it is a city. A lot of the time it'll announce that and it'll be like, Oh, wow, that's so cool, and it's a farming village that doesn't even have an army. But that is quite nice, because perfection means that um, the army will be a lot stronger, and that means that the armies on our side will be a lot more capable when the Civil War happens. So we have three places that are at high enough. This place is going to reach it hopefully soon. This place might, and that'll put us at one, two, three, four, five, hopefully six, versus one, two, three, four. It's a it's close. It's pretty close. Uh actually I might want to infiltrate this location just to get that kick started now that I'm looking at it. Okay, so you do want to form the alliance, but there's too much agitation. If I'm not mistaken, that might even be because of faith. Let's see. Disagreements about undead. What? Oh, that's so weird. No, it's not because of faith. That's that's funny. Oh, that's that's pretty unfortunate. Hmm. So this is a pretty this is a pretty close race here. Seed anyway, and start faith immediately. Okay, so this is almost at a hundred. This is at something. Oh, oh, this is going to hit the level needed for a theocracy. So I am going to go ahead. Oh, and you're aware. Ah, that sucks. Oh, that sucks. It's right on the tipping point as well. Dang it. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. Yeah, and then now it's going to go down and there's nothing we can do about it. At least it's not adjacent to any cities that we care about. At least. Okay, that's a bit more faith. That's going to hit 100 quicker. Still says growing doubt, as does this. And as soon as this hits 100, I think, let's see, yes, this, this, yes, 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 we're going to go ahead and declare. That's funny. Yeah, that's not actually going to be enough to make anything happen, but it is funny. You should be over here, laying low, so that you will hopefully be useful to me again, but it's quite possible you won't be. Because there is a certain point where agents stop basically doing anything for you with Ophanum. Okay, so that's at 100. So if we take a quick look with this, so you're at 100, you're at 129, you're at 300 and 300, and you're at 218, and I think think that it doesn't get much better than this. Doubt is rising, 
and we're going to be in a worse position if we don't just declare the theocracy. See, so you are all pretty good locations. I think I'll declare using you. And yeah, and that's a pretty messy civil war. So it's five cities versus five cities, which is almost an even fight, though one of them is the city, which is not actually that great, but we'll see how it goes. So we're just going to use Swift of Foot to hopefully quickly get to any battles that happen so that we can command our side and give them an advantage. Okay, so viewing battle, coming from Torturium versus Army of Refuges. Yeah, and that this is an example. I'm just going to go here, command the battle. And just chill and do that for a while. Another battle is happening over here. Yeah, we're going to win this one handily. Don't care about that. Okay, the alliance just started, but we're already at war with them. And that's not too surprising. And hopefully this will pan out into a win. We will see. Okay, so here... We probably lose this, but not by much. Let's see. And if this ever hits high enough, it's not going to because of doubt. But if it did, I'd declare a theocracy there because our world panic is low enough, effectively, that we can just declare another theocracy with almost no consequences. Alright, we have a very big command advantage, but it's not necessarily going to matter. Uh, Conclave has started. Oh, that's, that's quite bad. But ideally, as this war proceeds, uh, locations will switch hands, and when that happens, the ruler will be executed. And if it happens to be one of the rulers that's vital for the Conclave then uh, that'll lead to the Conclave failing. Like, if this fortress changes hands during this war, then uh, then the Conclave fails. But if the Conclave succeeds, that's very bad, because we're already at war with the Alliance. Oh, nice. Okay, so now we're going to win this battle, which is very nice. And actually, I should double-check if any armies on our side are damaged. Uh, you're decently damaged. I'm going... Oh, you're very damaged, actually. Yeah, we're going to use Empower Slaves on you. And now you are significantly less damaged. So I'll go ahead and Empower Slaves one more time, even though that's not as effective on the second cast. And that's the sort of thing that helps tip things in our favor. So in this case, we didn't quite get a majority in terms of the immediate control of the cities. But it didn't matter because we had a couple of places already perfected and... Also, we have a command advantage in this particular case, because a couple of heroes helped us out winning this battle. Yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and let this play out. Don't care about people grieving their dead. And we've won. So now we're going to start seeing a bunch of places get taken over. That's going to take a little bit to play out. Are there any other armies left that we care about? This is on our side. This is on our side. Okay. All right. This is all time then. Just going to head back over here to lay low again and let armies do army things. And the other nice thing about civil wars is that unlike declared wars, they last basically forever. Like if we look right here at international relations. This war is going to go on essentially until the
the end of time, and that's because it's a civil war, and nations don't take kindly to big chunks of them running off and t talking about their devotion to, you know, the divine light of Ophanim and all that, so they're going to keep fighting us until they win or lose, and since we're the only ones that have any armies left, that means that we're going to take all of their territory. And that will rapidly get us a ton of victory points for Ophanim controlled society. And basically from there, our goal is to declare war on a bunch of small nations and gobble up their territory until we hit 100% victory. Uh, do you have low sanity, naturally? No, you, uh, you're one of those people with a ton of sanity. I don't care about you. Alright, so we've already taken over this place, and incidentally completely purged its doubt, though, uh, yeah, <laughs> belief in Ophanim doesn't exactly, uh, feed hungry people, but that's one of the issues with these kinds of wars. Uh, you'll take cities, and then they won't have the attached, uh, minor settlements, so they won't have the food they need to actually support their existing population, but, eh, we don't really care about that, because as long as the settlement is controlled by us, we get the score bonus for it, and the conclave failed because somebody died. So that's great. We love that. Keeps us from having to uh, deal with the consequences of that conclave. So we're just gonna go ahead and skip through some more turns here. We don't care about faith spread anymore. We don't care about awareness anymore because we have a theocracy. Uh-huh. Alright, you're done laying low, now you can rest and resupply, because I still don't need you yet. Okay, all, all of these places are still at war, which is good. We want them to stay at war until we successfully take control. Okay, you've, rest and, you've rested and resupplied. We're just going to have you do that again, since we still have some downtime. And we're rapidly gaining victory points as we capture more and more places. Don't care about outposts being funded. Uh, you're just building alliance, that doesn't super matter. Don't care about doubt anymore. And rest and resupply one final time. Yeah, you're capturing this location. And now at this point, I don't actually know what I want you to be doing. I guess I could send you over here and you could sp spam out some more dark worship. That would gain us a tiny bit of points. Okay, lay low. And in a few more turns, we're also going to unlock Smite, which is just a bunch of free points because you can just hurl down Divine Wrath at some random location, probably this island, and then get a bunch of points for the destroyed settlements. Okay, and now you just go ahead and do that. Okay, wars are still wars are still going on, and the other funny thing is that uh, um, I think this is a bug. It might not be intended, but if so, uh, the tooltip doesn't explain it. Crusade can't be used unless you have a theocracy that isn't currently at war, and I don't know why that is. But basically, since our theocracy is in the middle of this massive civil war still, I can't actually tell them to say like grab this nation over here because the power doesn't actually work. Like, I do this, and then if we look at international relations, uh, look at that, they're not at war. So, 
that's just an unfortunate thing, and it does sort of affect your ability to win here, because sometimes you have a situation where you have a gigantic theocracy, and you just want to declare war on everyone simultaneously, and you can't do that because the power's bugged. Oh, well, that's a shame. Too bad for them. Uh, and places being destroyed is actually perfectly fine by us, because it's the same points for a destroyed settlement as it is for uh, a place that's loyal to us. Though we do slightly prefer places that are loyal to us, because those places will produce armies, and armies means more ability to spread our holy crusade across the whole world. I'm laying low. I don't think this matters anymore. I, I think actually I'm just going to let you chill. Because we are very close to winning. The end approaches. And at this point, we've just won the game here. Uh, because... Even if we don't take enough places, we're about to unlock Smite, and if you're very close to winning when you unlock Smite, you just cap it out with a single Smite and the game is over. Alright, so we have in fact won the Civil War, so now you can just do the thing where you use Crusade to gobble up a bunch of nearby places. And now we're at war properly. But now we unlock Smite, and with a... A little bit of Ophanim's Wrath. That's the end of the game. Alright, well, uh, I don't think I got in quite as much explanation as I did with my Venerva video, because Ophanim has a lot of moving parts, but I might make a more detailed like explanation video for some of the gods in the future, if there's interest in that. But for now, that's a single agent victory with Ophanim. I've been Bilba Man, and I'll see y'all later.